The newest Call to Arms DLC, Scorched Earth, added the 600mm Carl Gedate Siege Mortar into the game. In a game where the largest piece of artillery was 203mm, how does this thing perform? In short, the Carl is a fantastic unit, but it can be a bit tricky to use. In this video, we will be going over a guide on employing the weapon in a PvP multiplayer setting. If this is your first time here, this channel focuses on multiplayer sim gameplay, so if you're into that, please subscribe. For the quick basics, the unit is only usable if you own the Scorched Earth DLC, which was recently released for $10. The DLC has been a welcome addition to the game because it has introduced six new multiplayer doctrines and in general it brings a good amount of content for its low price point and this is coming from a pure multiplayer person. I haven't even touched the single player content. To access the units you will need to be using the following doctrines as Germany. Note that the Carl is available in every stage of the war. Now unlike single player, in multiplayer there is a whole other calculation that must be considered when using these units that fall into the doctrine pools you are only allotted 100 Doctrine Points or DP per game. So in a way, this is the most precious resource because you cannot replenish it. I am not sure if you can edit games to have more, but in all the multiplayer games I have played, 100 seems to be the standard. So with this in mind, we see that the Carl Get 8 costs 55 DP points or slightly over half of your points. This unit can only be purchased 25 minutes into the game. So this means you have to make sure you do not spend more than 45 DP points by the 25 minute mark or you will not have enough points to purchase it. So why are we saving these points for this mortar? The Carl is a pretty flexible unit that is great for attacks and defenses. The pros and cons are impressive firepower that can one shot anything. It's incredibly accurate. I have not had a shot miss yet when firing at stationary targets. Now the cons, the longer load times, the long flight times, the more it takes a long time to get to target, which makes it kind of tricky to hit moving targets. It's incredibly vulnerable and slow moving, and there's a low ammo count, only six shots. In short, comparing this to all the other artillery, I think this unit is superior to most of the other howitzers in the game because of how accurate it is. While howitzers do have a lot more range, they do not always hit, and the Carl simply does. Now playing with this thing can be tricky. It is so strong that in a way you have to play around it once it is on the field. It moves incredibly slow and it is vulnerable to air attacks. If you don't have anti-air protection, it will die and it has no chance to evade a hungry aisle too. But if you do have air protection, like a single flak 30, you should you should be able to deal with any aisle 2 that comes. Now while being vulnerable, it is not a glass cannon. This thing can take a surprising amount of damage. And you have three attacks won't one tap it, rocket already seems to just decrew it, and tanks will not uh, one tap it either. The crew seem to die faster than the actual gun unless you get bombed. I would recommend that the Carl Great is better in a team environment in a 3v3 or a 4v4. It's a huge dedication to use this thing in a 1v1 or maybe a 2v2 is kind of pushing it. Not impossible but it is just tricky because you have to dedicate so many resources to it and to protect it. The point dedication really adds up when you consider this thing only has 6 shots and you have to feed it more supply trucks. Now, while it forces you to contribute a significant amount of points to use and to protect it, the weapon is basically a nuke. It will wipe out anything that is near the impact zone. If you can keep this thing safe, it will get you in the positive, meaning the points you dedicated to protecting it will be less than the resources you are taking off the enemy. This thing is tailor-made to deal with hauled down KVs that are dominating an area. It will wipe out a large defensive position of infantry and tow guns. You can even use it to deforest an area or to crash people's computers in multiplayer. <laughs> My last recommendation around the Carl comes around the ammo type and how to aim it. It has six shots, three of the lighter rounds, which have 300 millimeter of range, and three of the larger rounds, which have 250 millimeter of range. When it first spawns, it has a larger round loaded. 
I typically try to use the lighter rounds because the extra range is nice and the damage radius seems to be relatively the same. Lastly, because this thing takes so long to aim, you may want to use the attack ground command or the F6 command. So just in case a line of sight gets broken, it does, it does not stop the attack animation. I play Call to Arms Oz Front quite often, and since the release of Scorched Earth, I have not really seen that many people using this thing, and it's been very surprising to me because it is very strong, and it demands a play style that is very different in Ozfront. It has a certain tempo that can be quite fun to play instead of doing your usual tank-focused uh, gameplay. Being on the receiving end of this thing is quite scary because you know if it shoots you're going to lose something and it changes the pace of the entire game where suddenly you have to deal with it and if it's insulated it's a tough nut to crack. I would recommend for everyone to get familiar with this thing and to experiment with it. I know I had a lot of fun getting to know the Carl. If you found this video helpful please consider subscribing and I hope you have a good one.